Hello, I'm Sakamoto from Nintendo, and I'm the producer for Metroid Other M. Thank you. I think that we've been able to create a game which might be able to produce some significant reactions from gamers. I should say at this point, I'm pretty much satisfied now that we've completed and introduced you to the new Metroid game called Other M. I'm really looking forward to listening to any opinions from the Metroid fans, as well as any new players who have Other M as their first Metroid game. So I'm really looking forward to receiving many opinions, either good or bad. In order for me to realize my original dream as to the action part of Other M, we needed a strong team. And when I was searching for the team capable of doing that, both inside and outside of Nintendo, I encountered the people at Team Ninja. I myself have played the Ninja Gaiden series and noticed that they have already done something very close to what I really wanted to realize with the new Metroid iteration. So I thought that this team must be able to make my dream come true. So I approached them and briefed them with the details of my plan. They said they could do it and were actually very interested in getting involved. That's how we were able to start the collaboration and as a result, I'm very pleased with what we and Team Ninja have been able to achieve. At least by now we have some solid feeling that this game is going to present something new to the audiences. I played Ninja Gaiden myself, as I said, and I got the impression that Team Ninja used to work on games which were rather challenging for the general audiences. However, at the same time I noticed that they realised the importance of coming up with the most appropriate difficulty level for each different gameplay setting. And because we were able to discuss at length what would be ideal for Other M, I think in the end we were able to achieve the most appropriate difficulty level. I'm particularly glad about working with Team Ninja, and as a matter of fact when I first met with them I got a strong impression these people never insisted on a particular difficulty level, so I was never concerned about the difficulty of Other M. There are two reasons behind the robust story of Other M. One is my concern over the Metroid fans. Each different player may have their own understanding of the characteristics and nature of Samus Aran. It's not good for the entire Metroid franchise, for its past or its future, if each player has a different understanding about what kind of person Samus Aran is. So I wanted to clearly depict what kind of past she has and how she acts in certain ways. The second reason is the missing link between Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion. As you might know by now, the story takes place between the two, because something significant was missing there, I wanted to be able to take this opportunity to link the two. So basically, these are the reasons behind the story of Other M. I'm afraid that as of now, it's difficult for me to tell if future Metroid games will go in the same direction as Other M. What I'm really looking forward to is listening to the feedback of the players, because we have challenged ourselves with something completely new. We really want to hear the reactions of the players, and I'm not necessarily saying that we will try to incorporate any and all the opinions of the fans, but we do want to hear their feedback, and depending on them, we might want to make some significant change to the future direction of the Metroid franchise. Or we might want to go ahead with the direction set forth by Other M, but unfortunately we've just launched the products, and I have no way of knowing what kind of reactions people will have, so I'd like to listen to their opinions first. The fact of the matter is that I've never thought in terms of balancing between the different Nintendo titles at all. For that matter, I've never thought about what's best in terms of other software created by other companies. I'm never consciously thinking about what other people and other companies are doing in terms of the atmosphere of their gameplay. The fact is, from the first game, Metroid happened to be rather darkish, or should I say it's always been quite tense and serious, if that's something that can differentiate Metroid from other Nintendo titles. We would like to cherish that. Whatever new technologies we're able to use, we'd like to keep that atmosphere in the Metroid franchise. Metroid changing developers just happen to be very natural to me. For example, as far as the Prime series by Retro Studios is concerned, this is actually another Metroid series, and I've had minimal involvement in the process of its development. Now, as far as my team is concerned, there aren't so many people involved, and I don't think that we really need to be persistent in terms of being first party only and just using first party employees. As long as there are people who work well and their ideas work consistently with mine, then I'm always happy to collaborate with them. My way of making games is by working together, and as long as we can find somebody who is capable of doing that and has a thorough and consistent understanding with me, then I don't care if they're from inside or outside of Nintendo. 
If you feel that Other M is more Japanese in comparison to Prime feeling more Western, then it's unconscious, it's not intentional at all. It just happened to be that Team Ninja was the best partner for us, and they are a Japanese developer. If, for example, we decided another company outside of Japan would be more suited for this project, then we might have worked with them. But as it stands, it was not a deliberate decision to make Other M feel more Japanese. As you might know, I've been working in this industry for a long time, even before the launch of the original NES called the Family Computer System. I joined Nintendo in Japan back then, and from that position I've been able to watch the progress and evolution of the games industry. If the video game companies outside of Japan have been trying to challenge how Nintendo and other Japanese companies have been making their video games, and I understand that quite recently there are many things Japanese companies are learning from the non-Japanese and Western game developers, then I think the situation is good. As long as we can see each other as good rivals and always try to take the next step in terms of games development. I think that defining games as art is a delicate subject. Of course, what we're making is an entertainment commodity. And if people define art as something you're only going to appreciate by watching, I don't think I should make games in that format as well. On the other hand, you could simply say, no, a video game is no more than a simple commodity, and the only important factor is sales. Well, again, that is not something that interests me, and it's not a view that I share. So, if I can talk about my interpretation, I'm always trying to incorporate some artistic nature into my games, but the most important element is entertainment. So, if there is a way that artistic elements can be worked into the game naturally, then that is a mission I will always try to accomplish. To that end, I'm content with how we were able to complete the development of Other M. I think that the most important core element of Metroid has always been there since the first NES version. No matter which aspect of the gameplay you're talking about, if we kept doing the same thing each time, then it wouldn't be very stimulating or interesting in the end. So we try to change the format, apply some new technology, but we do like to stick to some of the core elements of Metroid. In other words, we're trying to revolutionize Metroid without departing from what made the first NES game unique. At one point, I was wondering if there was anything else we could do to evolve Metroid, which has been a 2D game, and with Other M, I think we've been able to present a new format of the 2D Metroid. The Nintendo 3DS is pretty interesting stuff to me as a game developer, but unfortunately, I couldn't afford enough time to really learn anything about it. As you know, I've been very busy working on Metroid Other M, so while I'm very interested in the hardware, I literally have no knowledge about it at this time. Whenever new technology is presented, I think it can stir up inspiration among any and all games developers, which should result in some new concepts in making video games. 3D is going to be a stimulation we will all encounter eventually, so I myself am looking forward to getting hands-on with it and trying out the new creations other developers come up with. I'm also excited about learning about 3D and coming up with some new unprecedented ideas of my own. I think I have actually intensified my desire to be at the forefront of video game design, and I try to work on this as deeply as I can. I've had this notion from the beginning, but especially after completing the Other M project. I have reiterated and reminded myself that I am a game creator, and when you ask me what else I would like to do, well, I don't know if there's anything else I can really think of. So because of that, I'm really willing to devote myself to making video games for as long as I can. If you think about it, game development is a simple title. So how would you define game development? It actually involves a great many things. You've got to think about the story, you've got to collaborate with the composers of the music, about how it will sound and what role it will play in the game. Interactive entertainment involves so many different things that you can't find anywhere else, and that's why I want to be at the forefront of video game development. Sure,